Okay, so welcome to this next video in the uh, playlist on functional analysis. And in this video, we are going to uh, state and prove Holder's inequality. Uh, so, uh, if you recall from the previous video, um, we are on our way uh, to proving Minkowski's inequality, which is really important uh, for demonstrating that LP spaces are um, are indeed metric spaces. Firstly, proving that the uh, that the um, that the distance function which we defined on LP spaces uh, is in fact valid and well defined and secondly proving the triangle inequality holds true there. Okay, uh, so um, Holder's inequality is um, the next stage in the proof uh, of Minkowski's inequality. So to prove Minkowski's inequality we're going to require Holder's inequality and to, and of course Holder's inequality uh, came from Young, uh, well it's going to require, the, in the proof of Holder's inequality we are going to require Young's inequality from the previous video. Uh, so if you haven't already seen the uh, proof of Young's inequality, uh, I advise you to uh, go to the video prior to this in the playlist on functional analysis. Okay, so Holder's inequality uh, states that if x is a sequence which is an element of LP, and y is an element is a sequence which is an element of LQ, so x is equal to some sequence x1, x2, x3 all the way on uh, to count the infinitely many terms and we are assuming that y1 uh, that all these terms that y1 y2 y3 are either real or complex numbers now we're going to do it for complex numbers because if uh, we can do it for complex numbers then we can do it for real numbers since real numbers are just a subset of complex numbers okay uh, and y is equal to some uh, sequence y1 y2 uh, y3 all the way on again okay uh, so um, the, uh, the, the LP and LQ need to be connected in some way. Uh, so the P and the Q need to be conjugate exponents of them of each other in the same way as in the previous video. So 1 over P plus 1 over Q uh, needs to equal 1, i.e. Q is the conjugate exponent of P. Uh, and uh, you will recall that uh, this was a requirement for Young's inequality to hold true uh, that we saw in the previous video. And the reason that we're going to require LP and LQ to satisfy this property is because uh, we're going to want to apply uh, Young's inequality. Q is uh, the conjugate exponent of P. Okay, uh, so that means exactly what this statement says. Okay, so Holder's inequality then states uh, that the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi times yi uh, is less than or equal uh, to uh, the sum uh, from uh, i is equal to 1 to infinity of xi to the p uh, divided by 1 over p. Uh, so we know that this exists. Um, uh, the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of xi to the power of p exists because uh, x, uh, this great big sequence, is an element of the LP space. Uh, this isn't the complete inequality. You have to times this by the uh, sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of yi uh, to the q over 1 over q. And again, because y, uh, this sequence y, is an element of the LQ space, uh, we know that uh, this uh, summation i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of yi to the power of q is finite, and therefore uh, the, um, uh, the 1 over q power of that uh, is well defined. Okay, uh, so uh, this is, this, exactly this is Holder's inequality. Uh, so let me big box it. So that is Holder's inequality. So, uh, and we're going to use this in the proof of uh, Minkowski's inequality. So uh, let's begin the proof of this result. Uh, so, uh, once again, uh, x is an element of LP, uh, meaning which implies that uh, the summation from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi to the power of p is less than plus infinity. And similarly, uh, y is an element of LQ, uh, which implies that the summation uh, from i is equal to 1 to infinity of yi to the power of q is again less than plus infinity. So now what I want to do is I want to define uh, some new sequences. I want to define x bar, which is going to equal uh, x bar 1, x bar 2, uh, x bar 3. And the way I want to define it is I want each term, x bar i, sorry, this should have gone on forever, you know, um, 
I want to define x bar i uh, to be equal to x i, so I want it to be the corresponding term in the original sequence x uh, up here, basically. Uh, so, for instance, x bar 1 will equal x1, uh, but I want you to divide it by uh, the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity uh, x i to the power of p, and then I want all of that to the power of 1 over p. So basically, I want you to totally divide um, divide it out by this real number. Um, so um, um, this real number that appears here. Um, so uh, we know because x is an element of LP that this is some finite real number. So we know that the 1 over p power of this uh, finite real number is another finite real number. So I can, I can perfectly well define x bar i uh, to be equal to x i divided by this. Okay, uh, so uh, that's perfectly well defined. Uh, next, what I want to do is I want x bar, um, I want x bar, uh, sorry, I want to define y bar i, and I want to define it in the same way as I define this. So I want you to take every element of the sequence y, uh, so we're defining the new sequence y bar, which is equal to y bar 1, uh, y bar 2, uh, y bar 3, and you go on. And I want y bar i, so any element of this sequence, any term of this sequence, the i-th term of this sequence. I want it to be the i-th term of this original sequence y up here. Uh, so I want you to take the i-th term of this sequence, and I want you to again uh, standardise it by dividing it through by i is equal to 1 uh, to infinity of the uh, summation y i to the power of q divided by 1 over q. Now, uh, I claim... Uh, that x bar i is an element of LP, and similarly, y, oh sorry, not x bar i, x bar is the whole sequence, and similarly, y bar, the entire sequence, is an element of LQ. Now, what was the condition to be an element of um, uh, LP or LQ? Well, it was for LP, uh, the, the condition for it to be an element of LP is that the sum from, let's say, uh, we need a new variable, let's say k is equal to 1 to infinity of... Um, of x bar k uh, to the power, the modulus of that to the power of p uh, has to be less than plus infinity. Well, let's stick this in. Uh, so let's stick in what our x bar k is, which is um, equal to, so this is equal to, let me just lift up the paper, is equal to the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity. Now we stick in what x bar k is equal to, and we get that it's the modulus of xi divided by uh, the 1 over p power of i is equal to 1 to infinity, the modulus of xi to the power of p uh, divided by 1 over, uh, well, to the power of 1 over p. And then you take that modulus, uh, now, and um, that, and uh, you do that to the power of p, and uh, we want this to be finite. Okay, so we need some more paper now. Um, yes, okay. So, this is very easy because uh, the properties of the complex numbers say that the modulus of a divided by b, so that from complex and from complex numbers we know that a divided by b is equal to the modulus of a divided by the modulus of b. So we can split this up into um, so uh, this becomes uh, the summation k is equal to one uh, to infinity of the modulus of x i divided by uh, this whole, uh, the modulus of this great big sum, oh, this to the power of p, obviously, uh, i is equal to 1 to infinity, the modulus of xi to the power of p, and all of that to the power of 1 divided by p, and then we'll take the modulus of that and do it to the power of p, and I want that to be less than plus infinity. Well, this, this great big number, this summation from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi to the power of p, and then all of that to the power of 1 divided by p, is a, posit is a positive number, or a, uh, a, it's certainly a non-negative number. Uh, so it's uh, a non-negative number, therefore when I take the modulus, it stays the same, uh, so I can get rid of the modulus signs, and then this to the power of p and this 1 divided by p cancel. Uh, so this is equal to uh, the summation k is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi to the power of p divided by uh, the summation from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi to the power of p. Now, uh, this is just a constant, so I can pull it out. So this is just equal to 1 divided by the summation from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi to the power of p 
times the summation from k is equal to 1 to infinity, the modulus of xi to the power of p. Now, this and this are exactly the same thing, so they just cancel. So it's equal to 1. So this entire, uh, so uh, this great big sequence that we started off back here with, uh, this x bar of k, this sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of x bar k to the power of p, is in fact equal to 1, which is certainly less than plus infinity. Uh, so that's the reason that x bar is an element of LP. And similarly, the, the argument goes is exactly the same for a y, y bar is an element of LQ. So again, you'd want to check that the summation of k is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of y bar k uh, to the power of q, you want to check that that is less than plus infinity. But when we stick in what y bar q is, where straight from this definition here, we get that it's the summation of, of k is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of yi uh, over uh, this great big thing, the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity, the modulus of yi uh, to the power of q to the power of 1 divided by q, close the modulus sign, and then do that to the power of q there. Okay, and uh, just as in this case, uh, the modular sign splits up, uh, so we get uh, something analogous to this. Uh, so I'll continue on down here. Uh, so uh, we get the summation from k is equal to 1, uh, to infinity of the modulus of yi to the q, and then again this is going to be non-negative, uh, so that we can uh, do away with the modular signs, and then the to the power of q and the one divided by q cancel. So we get that it's the uh, the modulus of yi to the power of q over the sum from i is equal to one to infinity of the modulus of yi to the power of q. Then we just pull this out as a constant and note that again uh, the two summations cancel. The we have 1 divided by the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity of yi to the power of q times the summation k is equal to 1 to infinity mod of yi to the power of q. So again, it is just equal to 1. Uh, so uh, we overall get that uh, both of these sequences, uh, their summations in this way, uh, where you take the modulus of each term, uh, raise it to the power of p, and then um, and then uh, sum that all up over every possible value of the term, every possible term, um, they're both equal to one, and therefore they are both in uh, the LP space. Okay, so uh, let's go further. Uh, so we now know that x bar and what is an element of LP, and we know that y bar is an element of LQ. And we have these definitions that x bar i is equal to xi divided by uh, the summation i is equal to one, to infinity of the modulus of xi to the power of p over 1 divided by p, and we know that y bar i is equal to yi divided by uh, the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity yi to the power of q to the power of 1 over q. And I'm going to take a break there, and we'll continue this in part 2 of this video.